And I was going to tell the story about the wave, that we're in a unified, energetic field of unknown depth. Oh, it's beyond anything that the human mind can comprehend because its nature has created our very form. And the mind cannot see it. It can see through us, but we can't see really what this is that we're in. That's why our scientists can name things and they can name the body parts and they can name uh, the, and divide atoms and the parts of what seem to be part particles and find that they are units of wavelength of energy. They can find those things, but what that energy is cannot be known because we're made of it, our thoughts are made of it. We can't go past a certain point. Whatever that is, the great sages called supreme energy. They called it the ocean of consciousness, so we like to call it the ocean of consciousness, and we say that all that exists is the congealment and the contraction of that energy into form that has created galaxies and stars and planets and our very own bodies, and that we are a pulsation in that ocean. There's a movement, there's a congealing, there's a condensation, there's a contraction, and you have in our own bodies vast space, which is the space between the nucleus of an atom and its whirling neutrons. There's vast space, but it can't be seen. We seem solid. We, our bones seem solid. Our ears pick up audible sounds. It feels like an appearance of solidity, but we are energy. And it's something we know in the quantum era that maybe my parents didn't know, which was the atomic era. They thought everything was made of atoms. More, they had more of that kind of thinking. So we have evolved, we have a, a deeper understanding because of our quantum physicists. So understanding that we are a wave in the ocean of consciousness creates this story that a wave doesn't necessarily know it's the ocean. So we like to tell this tale that once upon a time there was a wave and it just started as a little surge out in the big ocean, just a little kind of a little nice surge, and then as the shore created that it was moving the water that the wave is made of, the ocean that the wave is made of is actually getting, getting uh, shallower and shallower, so there's more traction. This wave is building up power and height. It's growing. It's getting big and beautiful, and the head, this wave sees many waves and, and some of them are gorgeous and they have crests and they even make pipes, yes, and they are surfers choosing them and they're, they're famed waves and this little wave gets bigger and bigger and it does its best and nobody rides it, it feels maybe I'm not good enough and maybe if someone rides it, it feels I'm the best in the world, whatever it is, as this wave continues, it begins to move forward towards shore. It notices that all those other waves are collapsing. They've turned into bubbles. They've turned into froth. And the wave just is terrified. Oh no, how can I stop this from happening? It's happening to me. I don't want to leave. I like being a wave. I don't want it to be over. Maybe if I go sideways, I can make it last longer. And then it's over. And that wave just moves right back into the sea from whence it came. And it never knew that it was the ocean, but if it did, it would make everything different. Everything would be different. A wave that goes through what is the life cycles of a genuine, certified, good wave, moving from just a little ripple into a big wave, into a bunch of bubbles. It's just what a wave is supposed to do. But if it knows that it's part of the play of the one ocean and that it is the ocean, that it is the ocean, just playing with itself, it has a very different perspective. And when we say what is missing in the world is that our perspective is 
incredibly short-sighted. It's based on identifying with something that comes and goes, that doesn't last long, that doesn't see its intrinsic nature. We are energy. We don't see that. We don't see what we're a part of. We're not living in the wonder of that. We're wrapped up in the minute and utterly short-sighted story. It's so myopic of how big we're going to get and who's going to be with us and who's going to notice us and how long we're going to last and is it going to hurt when we just get, you know, collapse into froth and how's it going to feel and the, the, the short-sightedness creates so much suffering or illusory happiness like I'm great or illusory sorrow, I'm nothing and that's the ocean talking. It's the mighty ocean, and one of its little ripples has got itself all bollocked up, thinks it's about to die or didn't do well, and thinks it's all over, is a total illusion. So they call that, the sages call that the, the illusion of separation, that the wave doesn't know it's the ocean. In the same way, we don't see the very, very core of our own being is tied to the infinite, boundless consciousness. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate